with. Uh, my name is Tudor Borcescu. I am a recent graduate of Hayes State University for international business and now uh, an international relations officer. And I'm joined here today by our lovely student ambassadors. We have Laura, who studies chemistry and is from Romania. We have uh, Costanza from Italy, who studies civil engineer. And we, of course, have Omani, uh, who studies IEM. So without further ado, uh, again, welcome. First of all, please make sure you've muted your microphone and your cameras are turned off for the time being. You can ask your questions via chat as we keep progressing through the slides. Or if you want, you can also wait until after the slides are over and you can unmute and we can have a, a, a voice chat conversation as well. So if you have questions, that's how you ask them through the chat as well. If, if you need the extra help on Microsoft Teams, perhaps. And yeah, without any further ado, where is uh, HZ? Uh, University of Applied Sciences. Well, in the Netherlands, obviously, but where exactly is that? Well, we have two campuses currently, one in Blissingen and one in Middleburg. As you can see on the map to the right, roughly whereabouts those two towns are when it comes to the country as a whole. Now, it's important to say that both of them are actually coastal and touristic towns. So you get to live by the beach, which is actually quite amazing in itself. Um, Middleburg and Blissingen are on the small scale of towns, so they have roughly 50,000 inhabitants each. They are student towns though, so there is a high concentration of students per uh, local. In terms of accessibility, <laughs> this is something really good that comes with small towns, that HZ is at roughly five minutes from both the beach and the town center and most accommodations as well. So. If you live in the campus, if you live in private, you'll always be roughly 5%, uh, five minutes away from your destination, wherever that may be. Now, when it comes to the bachelor programs that we currently offer in English, we've got quite a few, as you see listed there, and we've put in, in brackets um, where the certain program is being taught. So we have international business, chemistry, uh, logistics engineering, tourism management currently taught in Blissingen and industrial engineering and management, civil engineering, water management, as well as information and communication technology, which can also be referred to as computer science uh, in Middleburg. Now, what do I mean exactly by a practical approach? And this is something that we've uh, put together for you in this slide for a few of the programs and our lovely student ambassadors are going to take each of their own program uh, in their own hands after this as well. So you get to see their, their hands-on experience. Um, when it comes to uh, international business, for example, some of the, the key points here is that you have a lot of company visits, a lot of guest speakers every single semester, uh, alumni as well that also come and share their experience, their journeys with you. And they just walk you through their own experience effectively of how HZ was and what was their mentality going in and how did they evolve as a, as a professional, as a human being as well, and how it is so far for them in their career lives. Um, you also get the student company. Now, this is quite an interesting thing. As you can see uh, in some of the photos to the right, we have some brands that are actually made by our own students. And it's part of your course that we give you the opportunity alongside a few of your classmates with the guidance of actual professionals and your teachers to start your own companies from scratch. So you get to come up with the idea, with the logistics, uh, how you want the products so or the design and everything. And your teachers and your coaches are there to help you make it a success. And we also offer you the platforms where you can start selling your product as well and hopefully make a profit as well. Um, so by the time you actually graduate, you'll be able to say, oh, yeah, I was my own CEO. Oh, yeah, I started my own company. It was great. <laughs> um, moving forward, tourism management it also has something that is quite a strong point. It has internships from the very first year. So we put key emphasis on the practicality of things. All the stuff you learn in the university must be 
something that you will actually end up using in real life once you graduate. We will always give you that foundation for theory. However, we will not overload you with theory that you will not use other than studying for an exam. Uh, so that's, again, something that's worth mentioning. Company visits as well for tourism management. Um, I remember actually from my days, which were roughly five years ago now, um, in our first weeks, we actually visited a uh, resort um, here nearby in Zealand. And we already had a project just there with our marketing teacher and our study coaches to find things that we can improve there and keep an eagle eye on things and what would we have done different. And we actually got to pitch that to the CEO of the entire resort there. So that was that was something incredible. You know, your first year and you suddenly just go up on the podium and you're like, yeah, I think you can do this better. <laughs> um, logistics engineering also is somewhat of course related to business as well you handle the how and the where and how will it all fit uh you get internships and company visits as well you get the real life projects in cooperation with companies uh so this is something that logistics and engin engineering students start quite early as well and before I even go forward, I will say that most of our programs offer you two different internship opportunities. And the reason for that is we've realized recently that, you know, you graduate from university and you're looking for that first job in your career and it's an entry level job that you're looking for, but it asks you to have experience. How are you able to have experience if you spent that whole time studying for the degree that you also needed in one of their criteria? So we found a way to work around with that to get with the times. Uh, we want to offer our students all the opportunities they can have. Um, so we want you, by the time you graduate with HZ, no matter what program you chose, you should have at least one year of work experience in your specialization, in your chosen field, so you're able to tackle any possible challenges that a company might throw at you and you know ultimately get that dream job that you want or that career step forward water management starts very early with field trips so what our students do here and that's quite interesting they go to to dikes and to to dig sites and they analyze water they see is it polluted uh, is there something that can be done here? What's wrong with it? Is the pH off of some or something like that? It, it, it's incredible because whenever I had friends from water management that were studying it, they were always very into it and they, they were analyzing the waves and how can they stop floodings and ultimately, you know, help build civilization forward in a sustainable way. And that's something that there's a high emphasis on with all of our programs. Everything is fought from also a sustainable point of view moving forward. Um, obviously, you know, climate change and everything like that. So we're trying to do the best that we can as well. Um, for water management, worth mentioning, you have a wide choice of specialization. So in your program, you get to choose, you know what, I like to do more delta management, for example, uh, or I want to do more aqua ecotechnology as well. Instead, you get that choice to choose your own specialization, to choose what you enjoy doing most so that, again, you know, once you graduate, you don't go to a nine to five. You go somewhere that you actually enjoy and you do something that you actually enjoy doing. And that's really important. Information and communication technology, computer science, you almost always work on projects for companies. And this is incredible. And as you can see in that uh, small animation there, that's something that our students are actively doing. So they're mapping things, they're using uh, augmented reality, AR, they're using VR as well, virtual reality. Um, and one project I can tell you of, uh, one of our students just told me uh, a few months back and it blew my mind. They worked on a project in a retirement home and what they did was they created an internal platform for all the retirees there and for the staff there so that no one actually has to leave their room if they need to, to contact the nurse or or to even talk with their friends in the other rooms as well and in addition to that video and voice chat platform they also made 
a game platform for them incorporated in that so that they can all just stay in the comfort of their own rooms. Uh, they can play, uh, you know, dominoes or, or, or mahjong <laughs> or I don't know, something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just have that accessibility at hand. Again, this is something I can't put enough emphasis on. Practical, a practical approach is what we're aiming for. And it's, it's all about that real life application that you will actually end up using. So moving forward, I will give the podium to Laura. Uh, Laura, please tell us more about chemistry and its practical approaches. Thank you, thank you very much. So hi everyone, as you already know, my name is Laura and I am a third year stu chemistry student and I'm currently doing my specialization in applied chemistry. And I feel like the specialization name speaks for itself and puts forward the idea that here it has that theory and practice, they go hand in hand. and whatever i can ensure you from my own experience that whatever you're going to learn in class you're later on going to go into lab and put it in put it in practice and see how it actually works in real life and besides the name of the specialization <laughs> throughout my three years that i've been here at hazed i've learned there are other aspects which actually convey the idea that Hazet is all about practice and preparing you for adulthood, for real life and for your future work of place and for instance in our chemistry department one of those aspects is the actually the, the division of the year and you can see here in the bottom page of uh in the bottom of our slide uh the names of the blocks that uh, i've studied and hopefully some of you are going to study in your first year starting with food chemistry and finishing with oil biorefinery they all showed us what where you can end up in life as a as a chemistry professional and what i especially loved them and found of high uh, value is the fact that they showed us what kind of tasks we might perform as chemistry professionals in one of those domains. For instance, in our food chemistry blog, we started with synthesizing, we started with brewing our own beer, and then we went to lab and we actually did some analysis. For instance, uh, we did alcohol tests, we determined the percentage of alcohol, we determined the purity, we looked into what types of bacteria can be found, hopefully none, but uh, as we were first years, there were some of them, We and we actually saw what's their effect. And it actually, as Tudor said, it blew my mind because I got to see what my task would be, what I would do if I would love to pursue food chemistry in the future. Because, for instance, what we actually did was quality control. And quality control is of outermost, outermost importance um, in big companies which produce food and food products on a larger scale. The same thing we did, uh, we've done in our pharmaceuticals box. For instance, there we took things to a whole new level. We synthesized, for instance, our own drug. We synthesized aspirin and we synthesized something called DBA. And you can see a picture of that uh, on the slide itself. It's yellow thing. And for those who do not know, DBA is basically your not so familiar typical type of sunscreen. It's more environmentally friendly because besides our usually type of sunscreen that we usually employ, it does not contain any heavy metals. Therefore, it's very it's good for coral reefs and it's also good for our bodies because heavy metals, as we already know, they do not belong into the human bodies. But as uh, to not to deviate, going back to the subject, so we synthesized those then in our organic chemistry lab, and then we went uh, we went on we went ahead and we looked at their purity. We tried to see what function groups we have there because as you already know in pharmaceutical company it's very very important to only obtain the product that you're actually looking for you do not want to have any impurities or some other uh, some other type of isomers because that can completely throw off your product and can give you not the desired effect um, and that's what we've done for both dba and aspirin but for DBA, we even took it to a whole new level. We went to our biochemistry lab and there we cultured our own bacteria. We applied the DBA uh, and then we uh, allowed the bacteria to be uh, under the influence of UV, of UV light for different periods of time. And then we actually assessed the efficacy of our own sunscreen. <laughs> there were funny stories and not so, fu and like, not so funny stories, some happy endings and some endings which could have been better, but it was so great to see what you can actually do and to understand what what your role in a pharmacy company would be if you were if you were to pursue that in the future. I have to say that, I, I, like even after 
I was only a first year student and going into my second year. But at the end of my first year, I was already prepared to take on projects, to just go deeper, to delve deeper into the field. And I had this idea, I, I loved working in the lab. And as a person who hasn't had much experience with working in the lab back, back, back at school, here at Hazed, I really understood how how important is to be able to take that step and to go from theory to practice because theory is important as we have already know we needed foundation in order to move forward and to come up with brilliant ideas and propel the world to uh, to new stages but we also need people who are able to put that theory into practice to see how it works to just be over there and i feel like as a chemistry student that's very important and I've gained that has that in my first year and throughout the first, like after the two years that I've been here as well, uh, my experience and my ability to handle practical work has improved even more. And it made me ready for what was going to come in my second and third year. And in my next slide, I have some more information. I would like to touch upon that. Yes, here it is. As I already told you, and as I already to as I already told you, the first year it made, it prepared me for the second year completely, and I was ready to just be thrown there and just to see what life has to bring me, what some more experience, experience and experiments I have to conduct. And um, in my one great, what I like to mention is that one great aspect of being a student here at HZ, which also improved. Uh, it proved my like the it showed me the practicality of my study program was the ability to applied to this extra extra program called ASTP, which is a national wide program here in the Netherlands, which stands for the Analytical Science Talent Program. And you can only apply to it if you are a student at the University of Applied Sciences, just like H said. And as I already told you, that actually took things, uh, took protocol to a whole new level, because in my first year of ASTP, alongside my studies at HiZ, I had the possibility to undergo a summer course, summer training course uh, of lab, of lab work in the field of life sciences, but I've also had the possibility to talk and meet big names in the chemical industry, both from academia and people who are actually working on one of the biggest companies, uh, whose names you can see here on the screen. And besides actually seeing, letting me see even a little bit deeper on how practice and how chemistry actually works in real life situations, I've also had the possibility to improve my networking skills. And that's of outer most important because a student already told you here it has said we have the amazing opportunity to finish and graduate our bachelor studies with at least one year of work experience in our field. And I don't think you can get that in any other in any other institution, any other parts. Um, and besides that, if you, we also have the possibility to do a minor. And if you feel like, OK, practical work is what I'm best at, practical work is what I want to focus on, you have the possibility to go on and do a research minor. And um, it basically means that you're going to end up with more than one and a half year of, of, of work experience under your belt uh, once, you, once you graduate. And as I told you, I got the, uh, with the with the program that I was doing, I got the possibility to improve my networking skills. And that comes really handy right now because I'm actually looking to do my internship starting next semester. And here on the screen, you have the name of some companies uh, where my fellow colleagues have already done their internship or where they are going to do their internship. And some of them are big names in the field of analytical chemistry and life sciences, such as Dow, Da Vinci, BASF. And I can only say that I feel outer most lucky to be part of this and to be able to go there for my internship and that I feel 100% ready to go there and handle whatever task is going to be thrown at me because here I've here I've learned all the skills necessary that I must possess that are necessary for me to be able to perform my task my task as best as possible in the lab uh, but besides that, I've also gained the theory that I must know, that I need to know in order to come up with new ideas, to put my own spin of things and not just follow the rules, but I know, make my own. And that's what I love about our chemistry program. That's that's really awesome to hear and really, really enlightening. Um, actually, I, I only have one question out of it. How yes. many days per week would you say you spend on the lab in average? Um, I have to say that it changed uh, from first year to second year. So in first year, I had labs twice a week and they were usually four to five, uh, yeah, four to three hours long. But uh, we took it to a whole new level in the second year. We would, for instance, have labs twice a week, but now our labs would be from nine to five because 
our experiments got a little bit harder. We were able to handle uh, more difficult tasks, so we needed to spend more time in the lab and we got to handle machines that we did not work with in our first year, or we, did to, uh, we got to apply techniques that we did not get to work with in the first year that required uh, a little bit of time. So usually two days per week, always full of lab, three hours to four hours in the first year and from nine till five in our second year and, and now as well. All right, wow. That's it's quite amazing, actually. Um, and I also hear that you guys might be getting a new research center sometime soon. Yeah. So that's, that's those are pretty big news, actually, for especially for the perspectives as well, of course. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you also have time to to check it out yourself before you graduate and, and test out all the new things there. <laughs> if I can okay. just add. I, yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. If I can just add, I would like to say that our labs look impressive to me right now, but I'm seriously looking forward to seeing the new research center. Like, if I don't get to see it during my bachelor course, I, I for sure will just come back to take a look and maybe just mingle around over there, <laughs> just do some, just do some runs, because I'm pretty sure just going to be out of this world. <laughs> Okay, yeah, all, all the first years are going to be like, who is that person? And all the teachers, oh, that's just Laura, don't mind her. She's just doing some experiments. <laughs> the crazy scientist lady <laughs> just doing her thing in the lab. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, moving forward, I will pass the baton to Omani. Hey, guys, um, I'm Omani. Uh, yeah, I know my second year studying industrial engineering and management. So um, one of the main things about our study, uh, as you can see, it says um, that we have company visits every Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that is really amazing. You get that from the first year. So as soon as you arrive within the first week or so, they would introduce you to your companies and um, they would put you into project groups. And then every Tuesday and Thursday, you're there doing reports and you're actually working with the people of these companies and it's so amazing. Um, another thing is we get real life assignments meant to solve and optimize processes and companies. So those are the type of stuff that we would be doing inside of the companies. And it's so amazing because we get to work with different departments and we could see like how the stuff that we uh, suggest are implemented inside of these companies as well. And um, we have plenty of minors and internship opportunities in the Netherlands and abroad because of the companies that we work with and our study itself. It's so broad that we could work almost anywhere because there are certain, um, certain departments that every company has and industrial engineers just fit right into almost any one of those because of the way that we, we study. We study also management, so we would understand how um, how a division inside of the company should be run. So once we find the expertise in that division, it would just be smooth sailings for us. <laughs> and um, you could work for many different companies, as you can see. You could work for industrial enterprises, commercial enterprises, service industries, uh, utility companies as well. So gas, water, electricity, and companies and governmental bodies in infrastructure. So it's just so broad and it's really amazing, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, here are some of the companies that we work with and they're that honestly, some, um, some of them are really big players in the Netherlands. Some of you guys might not know that as yet, but like, uh, for example, I got the opportunity to go to Lam Western. And again, if you're not in the Netherlands, you might not know about it, but you probably ate their fries if you're anywhere in Europe because um, they produce fries and potatoes and stuff. And they give it to KFC, Burger King, almost all of the fast food chains. And we were able to actually go there during our first year and we did our project and the, we got to go through the factories, work with different departments and it's so amazing. And um, now for our second year, we're working for Dahman, we're working with Dahman. And um, I'm so happy because again, it's one of the biggest companies in Flissingen. 
and um, it's the uh, they make um they, it's the shipping company they make ships all types of ships and it's, it's so amazing so yeah those are basically the types of companies that we work with okay wow that's it's quite comprehensive and it sounds like you actually get to to jump in it quite a bit you know there's the industrial engineering bit there's also the management side so you really get to you actually get the best of both worlds when it comes to the business because you'll actually understand both sides entirely so you're you're also going to be like the, the mediator between them <laughs> yeah so we we actually from uh, tuesdays and thursdays we work basically nine to five at the companies so we are actually at the companies and we could see what's going on and we are able to talk with different people and network and it's a really great opportunity and um, I just think that more people should know about it and yeah we're trying to get the word out there right now <laughs> so just out of this is a personal curiosity right now yeah getting a snippet into your mindset let's say once you graduate what would you, what would your goal be where, where would you like to to work and what would you like to do uh actually what i would want to do is more go back to st martin at some point but um i was thinking about going um staying somewhere in the netherlands and getting some more work experience so that when i go back i would actually know more about what i want to do but i want to go more into the, um, the infrastructure so i want to be able to build up a good infrastructure for our country and um continue going from there but like i said um i think i would rather start in the netherlands and then go back after a few years i mean that that's that's really impressive omani you're making it sound like oh it's such a little thing you know it's you know the infrastructure to help the country yeah oh i mean you know you just help the country with the infrastructure and everything it's not, not a big deal it's not a big deal <laughs> right, yeah. well that's awesome to hear uh it's it's great hearing that and also last but certainly not least we've also have costanza with civil engineering costanza yeah so hi everybody uh, i'm costanza and i joined this amazing family and the program of civil engineering in february so just as an extra info i just wanted to add that the civil engineering course is one of the courses that gives you the possibility to start both in september or february so that was really good for me because I finished my studies in December and um, has that actually contacted me and said, hey, we saw you enrolled for September, but we also saw that you're finished uh, in December. Do you want to come earlier? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. So instead of waiting like one year, I joined this family straight away, like after two months. So that was amazing. Anyway, let's talk about the um, programs and like the practical approach. So like um, every year we're given an, a project and we divide the class into groups. The groups vary from like three or six people. And we actually um, make as if we're companies. So the first day we have to make a contract and decide the role of each uh, of our team members. And uh, there's always the team group, the, like the leader. And then there is the one that checks the quality of the products, the one that uh, helps finding the research, but it's also like it's a really good experience because you get to know how to work in groups, which is like what they do nowadays in nearly every company. So these um, projects, they emulate the real life scenarios. And so they actually give you real problems that are in happening in real life. For example, in the first year, in the second semester, in Flissingen, there was one canal that was actually smelling really bad because of some chemical components that was there. And we were assigned this project and we had to find a um, structure or a solution that would resolve this thing. So um, because the uh, smell was there just because the oxygen was not going through the canal. So we had to create some kind of structure um, that would provide oxygen. And that was amazing. At the end, we actually presented in front of the municipality and uh, this uh, representative was taking note of all our alternatives. And then we could have actually just like, you know, won the prize and be the ones um, creating the uh, project and everything. Like, 
what happened to um, uh, our presenter. Um, but yeah, at the end, our groups didn't like they didn't choose our solutions because the municipality already had one. But it was a really good experience. But no worries, like the teachers are going to help you through and guide you step by step in the first project. And then slowly, slowly, every year they help you less. And this is because in the last year you have your own whole research. And um, because of the previous projects that you've done, you're going to be able to tackle them all by yourselves. So this means taking responsibilities and uh, learning how to manage a whole new project all by yourself and I feel like that is the best thing ever and um, addition, in addition to all the projects that the school gives us we have uh, practicals and man I love that so the first day I arrived the teacher was like yeah so I'm gonna teach you all the theory about construction materials so like concrete bricks wood glass or whatever and um, I was like, yeah, OK, that's interesting. And then she said, and also next week, we're actually going to make concrete. And I was just this little girl. And I was like, oh my god, we're going to make concrete? What? I was so happy. Literally, the second week I got here, I was already in my reinforced boots and overalls in the lab making concrete. And it felt so good. Um, and so, yeah, we made these concrete uh, cubes and then we tested them and got a whole research about it because obviously there's always the uh, theory part. And that was the most amazing experience I've ever had. Unfortunately, due to the Corona outbreak, like there's less practicals, but they um, they are trying to find solutions. So instead of maybe having some uh, practicals with like in the lab, we have some uh, company visits or we have the same uh, practicals but obviously using and implementing the restrictions and like safety measurements um, as uh, every other course we have the third year where we do uh, internships and a minor so you have um, half of the year where you do uh, an internship in a company you can choose whatever company you want in or like wherever you want as well. So I was looking at a company that is in Sweden and has a base in Australia and I was actually aiming to go to Australia and work for this company and they make concrete and create new structures and they're actually working on a new type of concrete that you can uh, track without uh, like it has a chip that tells you where it is all the time. So that's really good in the log logistic bit because a civil engineer has to also think about how to get the product to the site, you know. Um, anyway, the second half of the year is um, the minor. So you can choose either to study something related to your course or something totally different. I have friends of mine that want to study business in those six months and they say, yes, as a civil engineer, I want to create my own business, so I want to have some knowledge. Um, I, on the other hand, for example, I'm planning to study architecture so that I can go towards the structural part of civil engineering. Um, but this has been my amazing experience at Haza until now, and I just wanted to share with you. All right. Wow. Thank you for that, Costanza. It, well, it sounds like you just hit the ground running, you know, first week. Oh, by the way, this is how concrete is made, you know, theoretically speaking. Oh, by the way, Next week, you're going to actually physically make it as well because, you know, that that's how the world works. <laughs> that is what happened. And I was so surprised. All right. Yeah. Well, and uh, so in the pictures, there's actually like my class making concrete and then us presenting to the municipality. So that was interesting. Yeah, I think I can actually see you in that upper left corner in the background. I think that's you over there. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, moving forward, if uh, anyone has any questions whatsoever, please, please, please don't hesitate to let us know. Um, obviously, you can do it in the chat right now. Uh, you can also message one of our student ambassadors, anyone. If you go on our website and you go to hz.nl slash chat, you can sort our ambassadors actually by by program, by country, by language spoken, everything that you would want, just so you know you have a comfortable time as well. And 
you know, you, you get all the information that you want and please rest at ease. All of our ambassadors, they speak from the heart, you know, <laughs> so uh, they they will tell you everything there is to know um, and everything you want to know as well, because at the end of the day, especially as internationals, we've all been in that position where you're still home. Uh, most cases, you know, you're still living with family and you're preparing to make that big move uh, where you kind of leave everyone behind and you're getting ready to start that new chapter in your life. Um, so we're here to make that as easy of a transition as possible and just uh, welcome you to your new family. And uh, we always end it with uh, this slide. Uh, you can't buy happiness, but uh, you can go to Haitian State University of Applied Sciences and that's pretty much the same thing. Um, I can't stop laughing. I, I always end it with that. So uh, by this point in time, it became a habit actually. Uh, but yeah. Thank you everyone for dropping by, first of all. And uh, now, yeah, if anyone has any questions, shoot them on and we'll be happy to take them. Um, oh, we have some questions actually. Um, <laughs> don't worry, Paul, you can <laughs> take as long as you need and just shoot us the questions once you're ready with them. Um, okay, uh, yeah, definitely you can also unmute your microphone. Uh, how can Oh, OK. So hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear perfectly. All right. So um, first of all, I really uh, what I wanted to say, I really enjoyed your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. We, we appreciate hearing that. <laughs> right. Um, so the first question is uh, which the specific ones, if I uh, the ones I have chosen, uh, the classes are located at. Um, so it depends, like uh, I, I've mentioned briefly in one of the first slides that depending on the program, you'll be in Middleburg or in Blissingen. Um, there may be one class every now and again that you would have to go to Blissingen, for example, but you'd normally study in Middleburg. Costanza right now, she's taking uh, Dutch classes. Uh, am I right, Costanza? Yes, right. So I'm, um, I'm taking Dutch class in Blissingen. And about the two campuses, they actually trying to divide the two campuses. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong here um, with the study program. So we have the more scientific based in Middleburg and all the other ones in Flissingen. Um, but the Middleburg one is pretty small as a campus. So, for example, chemistry, which is still a science based um, um, program, is in Flissingen. So, yeah. Yep. And it will be moving uh, next year, if I'm not mistaken, Laura. Yes, actually, we're also going to be moving to Middleburg soon. Uh, as Tudor said, hopefully when the research center is done, because for now we're still using the labs here and placing it. Hmm. Okay. All right. That that was that. Yeah, that that did. Uh, uh, sorry for interrupting, of course, but that did uh, respond to my question. The first one. OK, um, um, one thing I'll just jump in really quick and mention yeah. that we have a brand new campus built right now like it starts in October being available to our students so brand new buildings brand new facilities everything is set and loaded for for all of our new students in Middleburg um, and in Blissing and we also have the one that was launched I believe two years ago so also brand new uh, personal gym uh, Netflix cinema room in, in the ground floor um, all kinds of amazing things I wish I had when I was a student Right. Um, so, OK, um, the second question was. Um, if I'm still interested in a specific class, as an example, chemistry uh, by any chance, uh, can I join the specific class and could I do that on the university maybe? So if, if you want to join a specific, sorry, class. Yeah, correct. Well, uh yes if you uh so if you enroll you would enroll for chemistry you mean and you would want to join a specific class in a specific area in the university or uh well yeah because uh i did not uh take that down now that i wanted to previously right okay um 
Yeah, I mean, usually when it comes to the classes, the courses, chemistry specifically, Laura did briefly say as well that you get to choose, you know, which kind of chemistry do you want to pursue, life sciences or applied chemistry. But I do believe up until that point specifically, you can attend all the classes actually. Um, and once you make up your mind, you will attend specialized classes for your uh, for, for the chemistry bit in particular. Uh, Tudor, I'm sorry for yeah. interrupting. If I, if I can just add, um, you're right. In the first two years, we do a combination 50-50 uh, of life science and applied chemistry. So in each block, you'd always have something like an analytical chemistry, you'd have organic chemistry, and you always have a biology-oriented class, such as cell biology, microbiology, or biochemistry. And you do that for the first two years, and you can only choose your specialization in your third year, once you've actually tasted everything and you've tasted the water, so you know what you want. Thank you. Any other questions that you want to shoot uh, at us? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, uh, I brought uh, one more question. It was about um, how many years does each class take, or, or does that depend on the class? Um, so each bachelor's takes anywhere between three and four years on average. So it, it also depends on you because we offer for most programs, we offer the fast track option as well. And that does depend from student to student. Um, so that's that's something that you would take once you finalize your first exam session, which is at, on normally speaking, I, I believe uh, October, November. Uh, once you get those results, you can go to your study coach and say, hey, I'd like to do the, the fast track option. And then you both look together on how you can turn it from a four year bachelor's program to a three year bachelor's program. OK, thank you. And, and uh, also, yeah. can I add, sorry, very quickly, um, with the uh, classes and everything, if you get to know the teacher and then talk to him or her, you can ask for exemptions. So we had lots of uh, exp like people that already had bachelors and just wanted to add more knowledge to their uh, like educational background. And so, for example, uh, one specific um, person, he already studied arch architecture and then joined us last year with the civil engineering program. But because the two uh, courses were really uh, similar to each other, he got exemptions for most of the first year um, uh, classes so that he could just focus on the ones that he never did. So that's also an option. Oh, all right. Um, well, uh, those are pretty much about uh, all questions I have brought down for myself. So uh, um, thank you, of course, all for your responses. And uh, actually, I'm really looking forward to start studying. Awesome. It's great to hear that. And we're happy to hear that we're we're helping. Um, that's our goal, actually. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Looking forward to hopefully seeing you soon. Um, we also have some questions in the chat. Uh, I have sort of answered one uh, from Haneke. I hope I've pronounced your name right. I apologize if I haven't. Uh, how can we learn more about the water management program? And is there any uh, other webinar planned or can we ask someone separately who's doing the study? Um, yes, you. there will be a new webinar slash info session uh, specifically for water management. Uh, we will uh, announce it shortly as well, uh, so don't miss it. Um, but also you are more than welcome to, to contact student ambassadors uh, for example, uh, we have uh, Lila, who is from uh, Italy, and she is actively studying uh, water management. If you'd like, I can give you the, the direct link to her, or I can um, write you in private her hates at email address so you can contact her with questions. Um, and we also have a I will I'll send it to you momentarily, Hanneke. Uh, and we also have a question from Daniel. Is it true that if I take a student loan to pay for my education and I finish my education within 10 years, the loan 
does not have to be paid back or at least not in full? Oh, that's a that's a really good question, actually. That's the kind of question that really stumps us. Um, so the way these loans and grants work, they come from the Dutch government, of course. Uh, it's from the website called Duo, which I will link to you directly the international version of it. So you have an easier time actually navigating the menus and everything. Um, so if you click there, you have five different tabs and they're all revolving around studying in Netherlands, uh, you know, loans, grants, etc. Now, this does change from year to year, so I cannot tell you concrete like, oh, it's going to be a grant and then it turns out to be a loan. And then, you, you know, I'm, I'm not factually telling you something. Um, so it does change from year to year. It can be a grant, it can be a loan. I, I can't tell you for sure, but I can say check that website when you apply for it and it would always tell you what the correct version is for for this year. Um, if it's a grant, you don't have to pay it back. If it's a loan, you do have to pay it back. Um, and the loan, I believe, had something like 0.1% interest um, for the tuition fee specifically. And uh, it's even sometimes a good idea to make it put it in your bank account and from the interest rate that you get from the bank account you'll actually make more money um, than not having made that loan at the end of the uh, period no 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 don't worry daniel it's fine we, we've all been there so there's nothing to to be sorry about it this is on every international student's mind so really don't don't be sorry um, we're happy to help to the best of our abilities uh, we even have members of staff dedicated to helping international uh, international students apply for loans and grants and everything. So we're here for you, really. Um, Haneke, I will send you that uh, email in private just now as well, so you have it. And Lila will be expecting your email and she will happily answer any any of your questions as well. Um, moving forward, does anyone else have any questions perhaps that we can answer? And really, don't be shy. Ask anything that can pop to your mind. Um, it's it's better to ask them than to kind of dwell on them and and just, you know, think, oh, should I have asked? Should I have not? I can't find the info. Um, we have another question. Let's see. Um, yes, about the the email of the details for the upcoming webinar for water management. Of course, we will make sure you're on the list and we will send it to you. So don't worry, we'll keep you on the loop. Um, please let me know. You can write to me in private though the email exactly so I can always double check that you are added to the list. Uh, so we don't even accidentally skip you, um, but yeah. Uh, is it possible to get a job which I would work in English in during this time I study? Well, um, on that, actually, I think I can even let our student ambassadors to, to pick up the tab on. Um, maybe we can do Laura. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I was ready like I was hoping it was me, it would be me who would answer. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, of course, uh, throughout the three years they've been here, I've had three jobs, <laughs> one each year, and all of them, I was lucky enough to be able to work in English. And uh, 
there are different restaurants around Flissingen or, or Middel, Middelburg, which offer positions to students, to international students. Sometimes you can even get help from the university and get a position uh, over there. Also here in Flissingen, we have the work zone at the, uh, the university's work zone, and they also help students with finding jobs which do not require you to speak Dutch. And this is not only my experience, but uh, all, all of my friends, they've also, most of them have worked part time for all their studies. And we are all international students and we just speak the basic Dutch, fine uh, dag and bye, doei. So it worked for us. So it's going to work for you as well. Thank you very much for the answer. Happy to help. Uh, oh, anyone else? maybe has some questions. Can be anything, studying abroad, Netherlands, hate set. Um, we've had questions about financing as well. That's also fair game. Um, courses, teachers, accessibility, weather can also be a thing. <laughs> a good question. Um, I think, yes, our students are probably best equipped to answer uh, this question. Is there a budget student restaurant on campus? I'll leave this up for grabs. Can I, uh, can I ask her for this again? Um, because I'm, I'm just because I'm sorry here, but we have the canteen, we have the cafeteria and there's always nice lunch, nice food that you can grab and which is fairly cheap. And we also have a cafe over here and the price as well are pretty cheap and you can get, you can get really, really nice, top nice, top notch cafes uh, here in Plissingen. So at our cafeteria, you can get things like soups, you can get snacks, uh, sandwiches, so plenty of them. And it's always the first choice you can, you, yeah, yeah it's always every student's first choice. So I think it works. Any tips for Middleburg, guys? Um, same for Middleburg. We have the cafeteria and it's fairly cheap as well. They offer both sandwiches and warm meals as well. Um, and actually connecting to the work, we have the work, um, uh, what's it called, the work field as well. And so sometimes they would also ask you, would you like to work at the cafeteria for this time? And they actually pay you, like maybe you have one hour free and you don't know what to do and you go like hey i'm free would you do you need a help in the cafeteria and they just pay you for that hour that you go there so that's also really nice um and also the supermarkets here are really big and you can find them everywhere and they're fairly cheap as well so that's really good if you like to meal prep i personally uh, prefer meal prepping and so i always make like a big grocery shopping and then just meal prep for the whole week I'm sorry if I can just add to Constanza's answer about that, about the meal prep. I think that's a life saving technique and I personally learned about that from some students doing a takeover on our on the international Instagram of Hazet. Uh, you can find at, it at Hazet at az.international and uh, besides the supermarkets, which are there are plenty of them around Flissingen and Middleburg, you also have the, um, the marketplace, which take uh, which in Flissingen is always on Friday and you have one on Saturday and you can find like fresh produce, which at a fairly cheap price and very accessible to students. So yeah, also it's also it's always good to follow the Instagram just to find out tips and tricks from ex more experienced and older students. Shameless plug, hz.international. <laughs> All right, um, slightly touching on that job uh, question, part-time jobs. Um, just so you understand how many possibilities there are actually, uh, in Domino's Pizza specifically in Blissing, and I think 75% of the staff is actually hates that students, uh, hates that international students. So the language there is actually English and not even Dutch because there's more internationals than Dutch working. And Last week, um, while I was slightly cheating on my diet, I went to New York Pizza and the manager there knows that I, I, I represent HZ and he actually asked me, do we have international students that want to work? Uh, he, anyone from 17, 18, 19 up to maximum 20 because he really needs staff because everyone wants, well, everyone wants pizza nowadays. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the possibilities are there. You you just have to, you know, obviously put yourself out there and look for them. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, there are the people that say, I really need a job. I really need a job. And there are the people that say, I really need a job. I'm going out. I'm taking CVs with me. I'm going to the companies. And chances are, you know, the, the second ones are going to be the ones that actually get the jobs. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> no worries for, for the answers as well. Again, happy to help. Um, perhaps any more questions or have we covered everything? Um, that's a good question, actually. And we have quite a small, quite a bit of variety actually now with our students. I will say a few words myself and then I will also ask our ambassadors to say from their own personal experiences and how they see things proceeding from here. Um, like I said, I am a recent graduate myself and many of my friends who, who studied various programs have decided to go further and get master's degrees. Uh, so we have people with uh, executive master's degrees even. Um, and those are obviously very good degrees. We've had people who did civil engineering Coincidentally enough, like Costanza, and they went to London at UCL, University College London, where they continued on a master's degree. And now they, they actually work for the Dutch government um, and, and something that really goes above my head, so I can't really go in depth in, sorry. Um, but it really depends. Uh, I know chemistry students usually have a little trick they use, so I'll, I'll let Laura handle, handle that bit. And uh, yeah, if Constanza Onomani will also have something to add, of course, we're happy to, to hear. So, uh, guys? Can I go first for the chemistry part? Um, for chemistry, as, as I told you, there is the minor period. And as I, I mentioned that you can do a research minor if you feel like practical work, lab research is what you'd like to do. But there's also trick, uh, the trick of doing a pre-master during your study. So basically you enroll for a six month course at one of the Dutch research universities and you gain all the extra knowledge that you would you would need to gain in order to be eligible for a master straight out of your studies. But I'd also like to mention that uh, sometimes it depends on the university and depends on the country as well. Some universities here in the Netherlands and abroad might not ask for a pre-master um, if you'd like to enroll for one of their master degrees. Well, the same applies for civil engineering. During your minor, uh, like the period of your minor, it's so like six months, you can do the pre-master uh, course and that gets you straight into the master without doing the pre-master, you know, after you graduate. So that's the trick that civil engineering uses as well. Yeah, it's actually the same in industrial engineering as well, because um, your pre-master takes about six or five months. So what they said is um, that's the same amount of time for your for your minor. You just do a pre-master instead of a minor, and then after you graduate, you go off and do your masters. So yeah, it's um, quite accessible to do a master, I'd say. Um, obviously. It, it, uh, usually the minor is in the third year, so three out of four. Uh, unless you fast track, then it's going to be two out of three, I think. Um, that that depends on, on you and the study coach at the time, how you best fit it in. Um, but it, it it's on a case by case basis, I'd say. So yeah, uh, it's quite possible. We've had, I can actually tell you, I have a friend that was studying roughly the same time I was studying, so four or five years. Um, he did chemistry, then he did his master's, and now he's doing, he's getting his PhD. So you, yeah, you can, you can go all the way if that's something that appeals to you. Um, we do give you all the tools and all the possibilities and all the, all the everything you need to succeed. Well, it, it depends, Paul. So what, what do you mean by different classes at the university? Um, because, you know, if you apply for international business, you'll be studying international business. Uh, you can 
pick up like Dutch classes like Costanza, for example, um, or other extra extra classes. But you know, if you study international business, you won't be studying chemistry as well at the same time unless you actually enroll for that somehow as well. Um, if I can add to that, um, basically every study program has its own program of courses that you would get within the study, and those are uh, mostly mandatory unless um, you got them in a previous study, then you might be uh, eligible for an exemption, and you just take a test and you don't have to do that one anymore. But other than that, you have to take the whatever is in your study program. Right, so Pauls, hopefully that helped you a bit more clarify things. If not, tell us and we, we can try a different approach at the at answering the question. Yeah, um, like like for example, in my program we have a we have a lot of different uh, courses. So we would have uh, business courses, we have technical courses, we have a lot of different courses. So um, you can't really choose different courses from different studies and make from different studies. Right. Um, does anyone have any more questions? Okay, we'll give this two minutes. Um, if anyone has any more questions, they can think of them and ask really quick. Otherwise, you can always drop us an email as well, and we will always still be just as happy to answer them as well. <laughs> 